All right, so welcome back to Run Away: The Dream of the Turtle. Uh, don't remember what happened last week. Oh, we made a pol we made uh, sushi for this guy, and he went insane. We also made polar bear guy make out with a polar bear. And then we ended up on a boat. Aliens are real? Yeah, the tub. Are real. And they've been feeding us technology. I like the frame, the freeze frame on the one on the right there. Hey, what theory? No, that's literally what this game is about. <laughs> the Terran, Tan, Terranites, Terranites. That's the plot of this game. They uh showed up. They wanted our animals. They wanted to trade some of our animals for technology. Humans couldn't have built the pyramids. True according to Runaway the Dream of the Turtle. Amy, I don't know if you've ever worked in retail, but ever, after having worked in retail for like 400 years, I can see where people would think that humans are idiots. <laughs> Go to the people who need your power. Set it. Set a cube. <laughs> you set it. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. All right, anyways. So we're on a boat. Uh, Galleon Wreck. All right, what chapter are we on? Five? Uh... I named this one Galleon Wreck because it was going to help me in the guide find out where I was in the guide. But none of this... Yeah, you said it, Brian. I think I'm using the wrong guide. Yeah, that's me too. Sushi typing. A lot of trading card game that was anime screenshots. I found okay we were using the game game boomers god I found it <clears throat> all right everybody's gonna go by really fast today because demon smalls is here so we gotta hurry uh Go down to cargo one hold cargo hold one. Who remembers where cargo hold one is? Why is this a thing? Because Jimmy and I duel all the time. <laughs> I dueled Jimmy jet literally just yesterday. Less than 24 hours ago. We dueled for like an hour. <laughs> Outfit Ogre, what are you talking about? Helmet, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amy, it probably was. Uh, look in the toolbox. Oops. Toolbox. No, I already toted one around on Mala Island, and it weighed a ton. Maybe there's Did something we? inside I can use, though. I don't remember Mala Island. We've been playing this game for like a month now. 
I bet the saw will come in handy. Ah, yes, a saw. Cut this rim. Yeah, DNF duel. It's time to duel. Of course. Who but I could dream up such a cool plan? It's obvious I'm a genius. Here we have it. <laughs> Actual cough bristle brush. Pocket size <coughs> and it wholesale <coughs> That was way funnier to me than it probably should have been. I, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> it, it was like the guy just like cut the broom, get a uh, piece of broom. And I was like expecting him to cut it this way and I was gonna have like a stick. <clears throat> yeah, hello Blackie. Uh exit the cargo hold. Alrighty. Alrighty. That's weird. Maybe I typed it in wrong. I've got the feeling there's something fishy happening here. The bad thing is that thinking of fish is making me hungry. Uh... Hey, let's see who answers. Hello, anyone there? Oh, nothing. I'm just trapped inside the cargo hold. And so tell me what do we pass when I stick into this contraption on the... Joshua, stop it! Man! Brian, don't worry. Joshua just ruined the encryption system on the whole yacht and messed up the passwords on all the doors. The heck? But I'll have it fixed in a couple hours. And if... Go to your cabin, Joshua. Hey, um, we'll chat later, Sushi. Shoot. I wouldn't want to be in Sushi's skin right now, or in Joshua's, because when Sushi gets angry, she must be. Well, anyway, obviously I can't just wait for her to get me out of here. Obviously, we're going to go through the ventilation system, which will let me click on. New hatches? Red panel. Hatches to deck. That's it. That's it. Uh. I've actually become quite an expert at jumping these long distances, but I'm better when going from high ground to low ground than the other way around. That's it. Now that I opened the hatches, I'm sure I can start from the edge of the tank. Scamper up to the ceiling somehow and reach the deck. Come on, let's get out of here. Hmm. <laughs> punai, punai. It appears I also opened the hatch to cargo hold too. Nice. What? Holy smokes! Well, that wasn't easy, but at least I made it here. Brian, this is a disaster. What? What's the matter, Sushi? Look, you really need to have a talk with Joshua. He's like a poltergeist. Now he's deactivated all of my passwords in addition to leaving the hatches on the deck wide open. Oh my oh, God. Man. What are we gonna do with <laughs> old Joshua? I already figured out the password thing, but I'm telling you, my experience is that it is quite unpleasant to enter the cargo hold and find a flock of seabirds looking at you as if you were some huge and yummy fish. Lucky thing, the computer warned me and I was able to close them from here. Otherwise... Don't you worry. As soon as I see him, I'll kick his butt so hard he'll never open another hatch again. 
for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, wait. Up we go. Ishi. One of these days, I'll have to identify some defect or flaw in her, but I suspect it won't be easy. Listen, Sushi. Yes, Brian? Uh... I'm going down to the galleon again. That's all right, Brian. Just start prepping and tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. I have a brim this time. Gonna use this brim to clean the orb. Change outfits. He did. Don't you is change outfits every on, chapter? Brian? You're not gonna tell me the dirt is really stuck to the surface, are you? No luck. No. No. <laughs> I'm gonna change outfits right now. We're not on a new this chapter. really sucks, Brian. Someone may have robbed the Trantonite, which would explain why the Interceptor ended up sinking the Orion. Or Malantunia suspected something and put it in a different place. The truth is, I have no idea. Well, let's stay positive and assume it's still on the boat. Where could Malatunias have hidden it? Well, if I were him, I would like to keep it as close as possible. In my stateroom, for instance. Yeah, that's the most logical. Come on, let's prepare for another dive. I'll go down ASAP. Are you sure you don't want to rest a while first? You look exhausted, Brian. Maybe you should get back your strength a bit first before... I'll have time to rest later. We've got... We can rest do. when we're dead. All right, these are all answers, Amy, to a different question. <laughs> I wonder if Chaos played the convenience store and or watched me play it. Those arts games are hard. Let's see. Go down some of the funniest games. <laughs> now move toward the bow. At the end I of the hall, highly suggest all stairs. of them. Go past them. Now stand facing aft. Do you see a trap door? Go up through it. Roger. At the mortuary, Amy. Several doors. The one closest to the bow has to be. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, mortuary assistant. Heck, sushi. No doubt about it. No, don't say another word. It won't open, right? This is always the way. Why isn't there ever a doormat with a key hidden under it? Well, of course it sucks, but when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I'll take a stroll around the boat, and I bet I'll come up with an idea to get that door open. Okay, I'll just keep thinking up ideas. And if you see Joshua, tell him enough is enough. What did he do now? What did he do? While you were diving, he made a major mess out of the cargo hold. 
He found a crowbar and started opening boxes of things, spewing stuff all over the floor. Replacement parts, nails, packaging materials. What nerve! Don't you worry, that guy's gonna get what he deserves. Hmm. The nerve. That was us. <laughs> that was definitely not him. Ever drawn Moses the Bible character crossed with Shadow the Hedgehog? Once. I was afraid of this. Now it turns out somebody has removed the brush holding the door open. Noses? What Final Fantasy Tactics are you talking about? Where's my brush? I felt like I was watching. been too easy for someone to come along and repair the door on the positive side the crowbar I need to get into Malatunia's cabin is there on the negative side I can't go in and get it because when I release the button the door will slam shut and I don't want to sever off an arm trying to leap in let's see how I can think my way out of this one <laughs> yeah. Amy think before you Speak. Think before you type. Uh... Done. Ah, oh, where'd the ladder go? Without the ladder to climb up the tank, no can do. Hmm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I forgot where Redger is. Ah, right, here we go. What's that banging? I can't believe it. Your boyfriend is messed out, man. With him, if I laugh, I die. What are you talking about, Joshua? What's he doing? I don't know, man. But he took an axe, and he's a banging at the satellite dishes. And what did that poor antenna do to him? Damn if I know. Everybody got to do what they feel like, man. And see, she's gonna be pissed. Joshua, leave that antenna alone. Jeez. No! Right now, I have no reason to stop. You can't make me. <laughs> Hey, if I take advantage of the fact that the hatches are open, maybe I could get to Cargo Hold 2 from here. Now hey, go. How are you gonna get out? Holy smokes! I could leap down there, but there may be a crash landing. The floor is full of metal and nails, and I don't want to end up like Pinhead in Hellraiser. I'll have to dream up some other way down. Holy smokes! <laughs> Every time we go through there, he says something. Something. I 
could swear he had a helmet on before. I wonder where it went. Hmm. Don't forget, there's somebody else adventure gaming here with us. This is two player adventure gaming at its finest. Who is in control of Joshua? <laughs> now, Chaos wasn't here last time. Joshua is doing his own adventure gaming. <laughs> on Saturn haven't I told you about the electromagnets I oh, had yeah, the They're giant fork creations equipped with a device that magnetizes or demagnetizes things at will when this is finished the eating I plan to attach the eating to the for and take up underwater skiing oh that exists the question is not whether it exists BB but whether we want it to exist art and science are based on that grand principle it was a giant fork with an hourglass attached to it to help you pace yourself while eating. Uh... Saturn, I'm going to borrow your electromagnets for a while, okay? Of course, BB. Don't forget to tell me how they work. <laughs> Nifty. My first pair of electromagnets. <laughs> At the sp the spoon. Here we go. That's pretty. That's pretty close, Amy. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Excuse me, big yawn. Hey, that's not bad. Once I'm up there, I slide down the wall of cargo hold two, snatch the crowbar, and run out. I don't know whether I can trust Saturn's little inventions, but what choice is there? Three-way tie for second place. Mine. No door will be any match for me with this crowbar. The Trantonite awaits me. Definitely not hope. <laughs> Let's say hope on the uh, Z sword. I don't know much about Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z. It might be in there. Chaos. Could be one of the answers. Oh no. That's how we drowned.
tried it before. I'm pretty sure that was a hashtag RPG question. All right, chapter six. Who's ready to change their outfits? Hidden bacon of Avernus. Now we're trapped on a ghost ship. RPG style. <laughs> hey, Amy, they're brothers. They would have the same last name, right? Time for the grand ball, me lady. Wenches first. Are you gonna be making me walk the plank? Aye, aye, you sad mutt. But cheer up. In recompense, you'll be meeting the bravest Hidalgo who have hoisted the Jolly Roger. <laughs> Amy, have you not played Bioshock Infinite? <laughs> Captain, the line is ready. It's about time, Husky Hound. Shackle him and be off with you. Despite appearances. You have the upper hand on me, lad. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Everybody in that game is a white racist, name, Amy. No rank, no birthright. While I remain unaware of yours, indeed. You're all fucked. I want your name and a ship, you English swab, or I'll slide me sword through your bloody entrails. Oh, you—you you should have mentioned that. My name is Brucian Barskopf, and I hark from York. From its newest burrows, to be exact. Tis a pleasure, <laughs> sir. New York. Brian. Now, would you be so kind as to explain why you've attempted to board me illustrious galleon on your strange and tiny red and white dinghy with a metal hook in the fashion of a flag? Board mm. your ship, sir? I? Avast uh, there, Captain. I merely wish to be press ganged and become a pirate on your Orion. Kind gentlemen, allow me to place doubt on your most recent assertion. Ye wouldn't be the first spy sent in from your motherland of heretics. There even be a vessel by the name of Interfector, which the Spanish crown has chartered against my person. Arr, the Orion could sink that <laughs> I know, we've waited for so the long for and them to finally make a point-and-click adventure game about pirates. On his legendary hidden beacon of Avernus. Is that so? So tell me, lad. What other talk is there about me and them English pubs? Arr, a bit of everything. All good, of course. The monks are praying night and day, saying you're a devil fleeing from hellfire. The ladies sigh upon hearing about you, as though an angel-winged prophet had passed. And their husbands extol the honorable set of horns they'd be wearing. Were it dawn, in you go de. Capitan, honored unified floating object three miles from starboard. By Mephistopheles, it's a UFO. Pardon me, lack of decorum, <laughs> what? Brushian, but I have a tidal wave of business to attend to. Make yourself at home and be so kind as to await me return, when I shall be more than pleased to hear your news from London. Yeah, I won't be jumping overboard, don't worry. <laughs> Glad I didn't know you're an expert on Secret of Evermore. Hey, Russian mongrel, guard the door. You'll answer for this prisoner with your worthless life. Aye, aye, me capitan. Well, this is a most unfortunate situation, but at least I managed to board the Orion. If the Interfector's crew obeys my orders, they will besiege the Orion this very afternoon. So I have but a few <laughs> hours to remove these shackles, find the hidden beacon of Avernus, and take advantage of the turmoil which will ensue when the first cannonballs hit, to abscond in a dinghy, return to the Interfector, and command the sinking of the Orion from there. I'll have to work smartly to finish the job in such a scant workday. So I'd best alight if I don't want to end up in Davy Jones' locker. Shut your trap, Mutt. Hey, I've got him afeard now. Now I can get down to me business with Demon Dog. Hmm. All right. If I was a pirate... <laughs> she seems to be a prisoner, too. With a bit of my fancy talk, maybe she'll help me. Noble lady, allow me to pay you my respects. Save them for the sharks, Monsieur Bursion. Soon, thou shall be kissing the keel 
with need of their help more than mine. I doubt the sharks would make a banquet of my squalid flesh, but that is not the reason for my arrival on board. You're as imprisoned as myself here, and perhaps we can seek a manner to achieve safe and sound escape from the Orion together. Very apropos, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you literally start the game and go back in time. I am now designing one. Sooner or later, I shall have one. But in the meantime, lady... Camille. Mademoiselle Camille de Le Bouvier. We'll carry on later, Lady Camille. As thou wishest, Monsieur Vachon. <laughs> if only... Aw, oh, dang. I was gonna say, if only Chaos was here to answer the Wild Arms one question. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, take the dagger. No, I've got a bad case of lumbago, and my physicians have forbidden me from using all bladed weaponry. Well, considering its blade is short and dull, and that someone left it behind on the writing table, I guess I could regard it as a mere letter opener. Into me trousers, then. There it is, a fine letter opener, in the shape of a dagger, though. <laughs> There are some some things I think any game over the age of like five years you've been given at least like five years I mean I do try to keep some things out but some of those are also from hashtag RPG trivia since I combine tonics questions with my own so if there's any RPG spoilers I'm gonna blame it on tonic it's gonna throw my back out of whack but I will but I definitely try to take things that are metals, but I guess early it's game. Just a piece of souvenir merchant junk. Come on, you ready, for I'll make you ammunition for the cannons. I also didn't add very many RPG questions because we already had a whole set. What the flag? <laughs> of course, Amy. Of course. Let's see. The mechanism is simple. Two iron crescents linked by a moving hinge at one side. And on the other side is a bolt into which Husky Hound has pounded a nail to keep the shackles from opening. The bad part is that it's jammed so far in that it's stuck. Hmm. All right, do we use the dagger or the paperweight? Mm, we have an actual choice here. Use the paperweight. No, the shackles are too well made for such a thing to work. What? No, the shack. Phil cheated. <laughs> if God. the tip were thinner, maybe I could. It's too wide, though. Nice samurai armor. It's from the game Tomorrow. Uh, returns. Tomorrow, today, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday revised. Yesterday <laughs> revised. Earns, I don't remember the name of that game. Yesterday too. Origins, <laughs> that's the one. Uh. Go home, loser. <laughs> it looks like it was put there to wound any and all passersby. I can't reach it by Jove. Hi, Jove. I'm too far away from hither to do such a feat. I'd have to be stretchier than a seven-tailed dragon's tongue. I'm too far away. May I interrupt you, Lady Camille? I'm out with it, Monsieur Bruchien. Now, Yee's Origins is the uh, abridged version of Yesterday Origin. You can tell because they shortened Yesterday. Yeah, this is French girl from, get down from there, you horn swaggler, or you'll get our non-dream sequence into the future.
Are you aware of the dark legend told about Malentunias? But of course, monsieur. Europe's palace and the New World ports abound with fables of Malentunias' duel with the devil. About his beacon of Avernus, his invincibility, and even his sought after immortality. Mm. Do you think Malentunias challenged the devil and won? Such an occurrence. Love you, you rockets. Monsieur. Nonetheless, his haughtiness and cruelty are so extreme that were he to happen upon the What, himself, Amy? <laughs> he could scarcely amount to less in evil and perversion. I love that game. It is that he would send him back to the fires of hell with the blade of his Toledan sword. I mean, I if I was to play the game today, I'd probably hate it. But like back in the day, I loved that game. I think I might still own it. I can't see it from here. Is there any truth to the rumors about his immortality? A trifle, yes, but not much, because it is known that Malantunas has already reached his 60th pod, though his face seems to reveal no more than 40. It was Apollo Smile playing the role of Ooh La La in the Space Channel 5 movie. Is his invincibility such, or do you think he can be vanquished? A difficult undertaking it would be, monsieur. Three moons you are in the environs of Margarita Island. A convoy of twelve armed galleons performed a surprise attack on the Orion. Now the twelve... <laughs> well, Paul Smile's probably like 60 years old now, so... Floor, ...while our vessel's sole injury was that of a novice blunderbuss shooter who suffered a self-inflicted wound. <laughs> An Echo the Dolphin movie? No. Is there any truth to the tale of the hidden beacon? More than hidden bacon. Thinkest, monsieur, judging by the care with which Malantunas treats it. Moreover, I myself have seen a lost battle turn to victory. Once the captain mounted the brilliant talisman in the boat's figurehead. I'm not the superstitious type. But it's true that the beacon holds some power beyond man's understanding. What is the beacon's origin? I do not know with an inquisitor's faith, monsieur. Malantunias claims he crossed the sticks, took on the seven-tailed dragon guarding hell's gates, defeated the devil with his sword, and absconded with the beacon. But this damsel resists believing such nonsense. After listening to him for an eternity and comparing the contradictions in his memoirs, I now the volcano's in a barrel. From an Amy. Indian graveyard he visited in the springtime of his life. Hmm. Where do you see the beacon of Avernus might be? Were it not in this room, it is most likely in the treasure hold. As for the remaining Malatunesian lore, let's leave the superstitions to the dim Spaniards and talk facts. True. Tis that dim wittedness has found Spanish soil to be fertile, but no more than in your native England or my beloved France. Hmm. We'll carry on later, Lady Camille. As thou wishest, Monsieur Rachon. All right. Wincraig's bit me almost. Yes. The crosses on the handle of the dagger, I mean the letter opener, are curved toward the tip. So perhaps I can use them to pull out the nail. A shame I can't reach it, because it would really be conducive to my escape. Hmm. Hark, Lady Camille, I doth throw a letter opener towards thee in the form of a dagger. To what do I owe this honor, monsieur? Allow me to request that you use the curved handle of the letter opener to release the nail sprouting from the beam behind thee, and then to be so kind as to toss the metal spike towards me straight away. I fail to comprehend <laughs> the purpose of such tomfoolery, but I shall appease thee. On me thy letter opener. Take care not to cause a scandal, or the pirate at the door may hear us. Chance? Already then, a soft blow means yes, a hard blow means no, chance means maybe. Can you? I think it's coming loose. 
So, Demon Dog, are you gonna let me in someday? Done. Catch. No, 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 no. Holy. Where did it fall? Next to thy leg. Wait. Are you sure? Yes. Damn. Stupid cabinet. Art thou hurt? Yes, my head. Ow! Ow? What does ow. ow mean? We never discuss anything about ow. Bloody nail. <laughs> Ouch! I appear to have pricked my unmentionables, but it was worthwhile, because now the nail is mine. Mm. I avail that thou art an easy man to make up in, monsieur. Wait shortly, and you will know of what I am capable with a single nail. <laughs> what did you miss? Uh, we went back in time. We're now uh, pirates on a... We're an up-and-coming pirate on a pirate ship. Searching for the big whoop. Yes, can salad. the nail is thin enough to press down the bolt, and I can strike it with the letter opener like a mallet. Let's hope the pirate at the door doesn't hear. Sharp blow means yes, <laughs> chain noise means of course, and ow means with great pleasure, okay? Okay, that means yes. Is there any way you can let me in there? Well, be yard. Well said. Perhaps you'd like some sort of bribe. Ah, it's <laughs> nice to know we can do some trading together. Oh. With great pleasure, eh? By Jove, I've smashed my ankle. I'm really quite pleased about your change in attitude. You wouldn't be lying to me now, would ya? Free at last. The shins were. Huh? What do you mean, of course? My guests, then, and set me free as well. You think you can mock me and get away scot free? You bloody son of a she dog! I'm gonna stand by your door and rip your heart out when you exit, you hear me? As I told you, my duty is to find the beacon of Avernus, return to the Interfector, and sink the Orion. I am indebted to thee, so I shall help thee. I know that in the diaries which Melantunias has dictated to me, I shall find a clue leading us to the beacon. But we must get ready to flee in case we are found before we take its possession. A dinghy, perhaps? Dinghy? Wait here. I know what day it is. Uh... I knew it. Malantunias is your typical cowardly captain with a dinghy tied up right below his cabin for a quick getaway in case Monday. things turn ugly. How different he is from me. I'd never keep one of those. Mark my words. Oh, honest. I swear. On me poultry honor. Triple constellation Saturday. Uh, well, let's just go inside. Problem solved, milady. Now we need only worry about the hidden beacon of Avernus. It will be a pleasure, <sighs> monsieur. I shall have been watching Kyo. my reading of Malantunia's diary. In the meantime, thou must search either and thither to see what can be found. <laughs> You're all mucked. I read that as Catboy, VTubers, not Tomboy. I'll learn to read one day. Reading is difficult, though. Yes, after being in the dungeon, I could do with some fresh air. Ahoy, mangy pooch! Why is it we can't choose our own canine sobriquets? <laughs> the captain allowed it once, and he ended up with 20 pirates mired in a fight to be named Sea Dog. By the Queen of Spades, I'd be burning up. Pass me the grog. So what if I go by Sea Wolf and it's Lou? I fancy Sea Wolf. You had the good fortune to be called Lap Dog, I'd say. By the Queen of Spades, there's no grog left. The swindling shopkeeper who sold me it, he said the bottle was magic and the grog automatically refills. But it's empty, I say. 
Your shopkeeper is not worth a shilling. There's no grog in here. Maybe the spell takes a while to grab hold and fill the bottle. You got any more sunflower seeds, mate? No, they'll make you thirsty. No grog, no sunflower seeds. Smartly, mate. Drop the bottle. Someone's coming. Good morning to ye, rabbit runt. Arr, I hate mornings. <laughs> that was the conversation from earlier with the, uh... Uh, tarantulas, guys, whatever. What's inside those right, here we go. seeds that drives me so mad? Yes, a thing like this wouldn't disgust a hardy pirate like me. What I wouldn't do for the seeds in your codpiece. Shiver me what? timbers, three whole sunflower seeds. <laughs> Uh the windowsill is on the verge of falling off. Just one seed, even if it's, it's held just up one? by nothing but a nail. By the king of clubs, no. With my bare hands, I doubt I could. You got any more sunflower seeds, mate? No, they'll make you thirsty. No grog, no sunflower seeds. If it worked with the nail in the cabin, it'll work here too. I'm not surprised the nail came out so easily. The wood's been eaten up by termites. Magic bottles, do me a good deed with your wizardry. Hello, parrot. Feather flea bag. Ah! Hello, feathered flea bag. Where does Malentunia's hide the hidden beacon of Avernus? <laughs> Want something to eat, nice birdie? Haven't we met before? Uh, you're all mutt. Hmm. I am really getting a craving for a dish of Peking parrot. Take a salad! Take a hike, Flatbeak. Fill me drug, wench. Darn. Either this parrot's a moron, or he's pretending to be one. Try an idiot. He's pretending. <laughs> Yes, my pretty. Eat them up like a dodo. Here, parrot, a sunflower seed. Yo now, reveal to me where your master Malentunias is hiding the beacon. A great Malentunias. <coughs> Down to hell. <coughs> Give me seeds! <laughs> To the east that trail. Ah! Give me seeds. Come on, you ratty mutts, or I'll make you ammunition for the ah! Empire of the Rising Sun. Ah! Give me seeds. Eat it, chocolate. I don't Question have mark. One left. Ah! Fill me drug wench. I don't know if the parrot's intentions were to reveal the location of the beacon of Avernus. But if I don't give him any more seeds, he won't cough up the information. Mm -hmm. There's a globe somewhere. I found it. It's one of the latest models sold in Europe's marketplaces. There seem to be fewer dragons and more land than on last year's edition. What do you mean, no counterfeit ogres? <laughs> Every seafarer knows the Earth doesn't really spin. It's the sun that goes flying round it. I can play with this one as I please, though. All right, Spain. We want to go left. Oh, 
we're not supposed to know the answer yet. Empty jug. With pleasure. <laughs> Lustering barnacles. It could have at least been full. That looks like an actual Spanish wardrobe with the authentic trademark of Vargas de Toledo. Hmm. I know exactly right. who that is. Let's see what's inside. Hmm. Not a thing. All those finely labeled drawers and slots, and there's nothing but certificates, deeds, and parchments of miscellaneous utility. Mm. That isn't any old jug. It's a genuine Ming spittoon. That'd be quite amusing indeed. You. From the dull sound upon landing, it appears Melantunius hasn't cleaned it out for a spell. Yeah. Methinks there be a seven-tailed dragon tongue therein, the likes of which you see at exotic shops. I always got the willies from these rubbery appendages, but if I must, I could always use it to barter during my voyages. Are we alpha changing the samurai armor? We have to go back in time further. Learn how to use the sword from a blind man and then come back to the present. Put on the armor. Swim out of the ocean. It's nice and stretchy, like all the fine products which share the Septicata Draconis Lingua brand name. Hmm. <laughs> yes, let's grab the bull by the horns and see what happens. Avast! How to get free? Me? Get free? What do you mean? Weren't you shackled up, Swabby? As far as I remember, no. And why would they post as despicable a pirate as you to watch me if they had shackles on me to do the job? Aye, that makes sense indeed, but it don't matter. Been too long since I killed someone. Mm. Uh, Malentunio said he wanted to kill me himself. So if you do it, he'll be mighty upset. Darn me bad luck, you win. Get back in the cabin, or I'll turn you into a circus attraction. Aye, aye, if that's what you wish. Shut your trap, Mutt. Mm. By Jove, it's about time I found some use for that slimy appendage. Hide this up here. Find this with this. Will it help me in any way? Let us proceed with the experiment. <laughs> Killed him. <laughs> Right in the noggin. That must have hurt. I shall recover the dragon's tongue. So nobody is alerted as to the origin of Russian mongrel's misfortune. You know, I'm glad to have that back. It hurts more than it weighs. I bet Molentunia's bought it on sale. By Jove, I'm a pirate! Not a, a, a... Well, whatever it is that's worse than a pirate. There must be something, if you ask me. Dress up as a damsel. 
What? Why won't it let me? I know where to blow my nose if needed. With that swindling swashbuckler on it? Not on your life. I guess Malentunius doesn't spare expense when punishing his men. How vile! There's water inside. And what's worse is that it's clean! Hmm. Alright, what are those odd marks around the doorknob? What in the Seven Seas is this deadly device? Holy Toledo! It was only inches from slicing me belly open! Hmm. Time for the return. That's it. <laughs> As our elders used to say, brains are better than brawn. It's time for the return. That little sword problem of your boy. I'll close the door behind me so nobody comes in. So this was the feared demon dog. His size is more to me pocket than Russian mongrels. So I think I'll take him captive. I'd love to take possession of his sword. But lumbago is a serious malady. I hereby bestow upon you the right to remain silent as long as I wish, at risk of receiving another blow to the noggin should you open one eye. Holy treasure trove! There's more gold here than in my Uncle Albert's wisdom teeth. Totally awesome booty. Not bad. All right, we're looking for the golden eye, uh, golden. Idol. It looks incomplete, as if something like a golden idol were missing. There's more gold in here than in the lake. What did that say? <laughs> My reputation as a pirate isn't grand enough to rob another pirate's treasure, but... Is this the One Piece? No. I can't squander the opportunity to grab that nice little antique over there and run. It's the Great Dosequa, ranked number ah. one in the last issue of World's Top Ten Idols. Okay, but be very careful. Whoever you are, I'm telling you to wait your turn behind the white line for devil's sake. Wait, you're the prisoner. Congratulate me then, matey. Ah, you've escaped? You're the one who shackled me up. Did you think an Englishman like me wouldn't be able to break free? You're right, by devil. What happened then? The captain released me and made me a crew member. Me most swashbuckling congratulations, mate. So what sort of dog are you now? What? You know, matey, what canine nickname has our captain decided to christen you with? Hey, what do we want to be? Crispy corn dog? <laughs> oh, man. Corn dog. All right. Crispy corn dog. Nice choice, by devil. By the way, mine is husky hound. What can I help you with, crispy corn dog? What can you tell me about the hidden beacon of Avenus? Whatever you like. Given that I'm a renowned expert on the topic, did you know I recently gave a conference at the Symposium for Piracy and Evil Arts at Tortuga University? Oh.
where is the beacon hidden? Now there you've got me stumped. Such information is secret and useless too, for only Captain Malentunez can touch it. Any other who by venture or undue rummaging might discover its location would have both fingers and hands burned to a crisp upon touching it, and then would be chased by hell-bent hordes till the end of all time. Which is quite Star Ocean 3, oil. end of all time. Isn't the devil upset by the fact that Malentunez has it now? Quite the opposite, matey. Though it's true Captain Malentunez swiped it most fiendishly, the Prince of Darkness is charmed with the outcome. For the Orion's recent performance in pillaging and evil has surpassed the forecasted amount for the infernal fleet of the underworld in a whole fiscal century. What Mr. Mephistopheles is a bit worried over is that Captain Malentunez disemboweled his beloved seven-tailed dragon and had the gall to cut out its tongue. Mm. How is it you became so knowledgeable about the topic? Due to me memory and fine reasoning skills, Captain Malentunez soon comprehended that I was the intellectual soul of the Orion. So he sat down and explained everything he knows about the beacon to me. To pass on the knowledge. Uh. I think I know enough about the beacon now, Husky Hound. Do my tales horrify you? A thousand wretched pardons, matey. Why are you standing there? I'm doing me regular duty on the Orion. Spitting out certificates to whoever needs one. Guarding the dungeon entrance. And giving out the daily ration of grog to all the half-breed dogs on this crew. What types of certificates do you issue? No, I don't issue anything, thank me lucky stars. What I do is fill them out, spit them, seal them. There's all kinds. The minimal hygiene certificate. Mm. The one for swine-like traitors. The frustrated house husband's merit badge. Official certification for eye patches. Hooks and peg legs. But most importantly of all, the certificate for pirates of low moral standing. Oh, I'm gonna need one of those. Is the grog ration? Of course, by devil! Didn't they teach you don't drink and navigate at pirate school? Therefore, every member of the crew is entitled to one bottle and just one bottle per day of fine grog. How's Leonora? Serve me up a frosty mug of grog. By devil, bring me a bottle and I'll fill her up for you. But first... Would you be so kind as to display your certificate for pirates of low moral standing? You'll simply have to trust me word, because I appear to have left it at home. Matey, you know we pirates don't trust anyone's word. Hmm. I would like one certificate for pirates of low moral standing, if that isn't a problem. Then bring me a form, and it'll be a pleasure for me to fill it out for you, spit it, and seal it. First, you have to pass three tests. Oh no, but three that tests. Cause no problem to your despicable excellency. First Have I done all, that before? A pirate worthy of his name must never show any sign of compassion. So you must commit one act of extreme cruelty. Secondly, a pirate respects no private property other than his own. For which purpose you must bring me certifiable proof of plundering and pillaging. Thirdly, any pirate with self-respect has to know about the great masters of piracy. Self-respect, so you say? <laughs> you a little quiz on the history of classical ruffianism. Hmm. Hit me with the ruffianism test, Husky Hound. Let us begin then. Question one. Who was the ship's cook in the famous crew of the ill-fated Captain Flint? Uh, Long John Silver. Long John Silver. I knew you'd get that right. Let's continue. Question two. What was the original trade of Captain Blood, which was most convenient <laughs> for someone wanting to become a bloodthirsty pirate? Uh, doctor. Doctor. Well done. That was the last one. Let's move on to the next. Question three. How did Captain Swallow escape from the island where Captain Barbosa abandoned him for the first time? Uh, turtle surfing. By inventing turtle surfing, as everyone knows. Quite inventive indeed. And to think, 
Some people dare say he was rescued by a boat of rum traffickers completely by chance. Uh -huh. Anyway, you must answer one final query. By means of what ingenious combination of trips did the four pirates of Lentil Cove reach the Caribbean Express port of call on Chickpea Island? What? I know it's a silly question, so I'll give you some background information. At the beginning of their careers, peg-legged pirates Henry Woblins, Diego El Cojuelo, Jean David Leclope, and Jao de Pasoromo did not possess their own ships. So they set sail on the Caribbean Express, headed for Chickpea Island, where they found treasure map H94856 in Lentil Cove. Like good pirates, they mm. were mischievous rogues who fought over the map for days, until exhaustion led them to tear the map in four and cooperate with each other. The last Caribbean Express was to pass through Chickpea Island eight days later. Because it was early in the morning, they had eight and a half days to get back to the port. The problem was that during the ruffian-esque brawl, they'd lost three of their four wooden legs. They decided they'd return to the port in pairs, with one pirate wearing the sole remaining peg leg and the other leaning upon him. Afterward, one of the two would return to Lentil Cove using the wooden leg, then forming a new pair to return to the port, and so on until all four could reach the boat's point of arrival. The order they chose was to <laughs> I hope everyone memorized all this because some were faster than others. Henry Woblin he got paid a into his boot because the pain in his soul would increase his speed. And therefore, though he weighed more than a sperm whale, he was able to reach the port in just one off of a day. Diego El Cojuela was used to running. And even though this time he was wearing garments and there was no cuckold in hot pursuit of him, he could still reach the port in one day. John David Leclope bragged he was the lightest of the lot, but he'd ingested some stomach-wrenching berries that forced him to lower his breeches every 15 steps. Oh, God. Therefore, he would take two and one-half days to make the same journey. Joao de Passaromo was the world record holder in poultry chasing, but it took him no less than five days to walk the distance to the port, because after a violent bout of hunger, He'd snacked on five of the five toes on his remaining foot. Ooh. I'll sum up the situation for you. Henry Woblins took half a day <laughs> to reach the port. Diego El Cojuelo took one day. Jean David Leclope two and a half. And Joao de Pasaromo five. They only had one wooden leg and the Caribbean Express was going to call it port eight and a half days later. And every pair would take at least the time needed by the slower of the two to get to the port. In that case, which two pirates were the first to go to the port of call? Henry Woblins and Diego. And Diego El Cojuelo. And therefore it took them one day. Now tell me, which of them returned to Lentil Cove with the wooden leg? Uh, Henry. Henry Woblins. All told, that makes a total of a day and a half. Don't get your waistcoat in a wad. You're not doing bad. Which was the second pair to walk to the port? Uh, Joao de Passaromo and Jean David Leclope. All told, that makes a total of six and a half days. Now, tell me. Which of the three pirates at the port returned to Lentil Cove with a wooden leg? Diego El Cojuelo. All told, that makes a total of seven and a half days. Since at that time, the ones left at Lentil Cove were Henry Woblins and Diego El Cojuelo, who only needed one day to reach the Caribbean Express port. They managed to get there in time, save their lives, put the map back together, find a treasure, and go down in ruffian history as the four pirates of Lentil Cove. Congratulations to you, mate. You've passed the test on history of classical ruffianism. <laughs> yeah, Claude. That was uh, probably the, high, the hardest puzzle in the history of adventure gaming. <laughs> Not so much that it's like actually a difficult puzzle, just that actually doing the puzzle without a guide is so much work and so much trouble. Nobody would ever do it. Whoever wrote the original guide 
is the hero. <laughs> the unspoken hero of Adventure Gaming. If he tried out for Pirate Idol, it would make for some laughs. All right, here we go. Deposit useless junk here. I don't know why, but I don't think there's anything useful in here. Napkins, silverware, clean clothes, stuffed dodo, a pirate's brain, a travel sewing kit. Look, a rubber chicken on a pole. But darn, it's missing the batteries. A 24.5 gigahertz Pentorium 7 processor. Cotton swabs to clean the ears. A Trentorian spaceship. By Jove. It's a no, I am actually seat. using GameBoomers.com. <laughs> A watch fork. Nothing interesting here. <clears throat> I use that website all the time for adventure gaming. <laughs> Even dog in the water. I better not. The water might wake him. Though, I have heard rumors about strange reactions when you mix water with certain products. That might come in handy. If my memory doesn't fail me... Here it is. Maybe the time has come for that bar of soap to help me demonstrate the truth of certain unproven legends in the world of chemistry. Uh, nope. I've heard odd tales about what transpires when adding this malignant substance known as soap to common everyday water. Let us now authenticate its verisimilitude. Oh, wonder of wonders. Yuck! Some bubbly pox reminiscent of baby drool has appeared in the water, as if it were rabid. I must christen me creation with a name. Soapified water. Soapy water? Uh, something like that. Oddly specific. I mean, how many years of most Final Fantasy XI players' lives have they spent on that one singular beach? <laughs> Think about it. Yes. Could everything I've heard about soapy water and its effects on filth be true? I'm not a man of science and philosophy, but I do enjoy experiments. Let's try. I see, yeah. Quiet, that you. beach is that famous. <laughs> Unbelievable! The filth simply melted from his shaggy coat like witchcraft. Even though he's awake, He's no threat to me anymore. Everyone knows a pirate loses strength if he loses his filth. It's like scalping the dreadlocks off a Barbary pirate. Hmm. How would you like to scrape the barn of a Rocky Rider? Uh... Hello. I have clean demon dog. Look here, husky hound. Sink me! What have you done to him? His coat is practically shining. The poor devil, demon dog. He'll never lift his head from the shame. How could you commit such an evil deed? Are you that ruthless? That cruel? I thought you were more honorable. Congratulations. You've committed <laughs> an act of extreme cruelty with cum laude honors. That's off to you, matey. Easy task. Take a look at this, Husky Hound. 
sink me! If that isn't certifiable proof of level 3 plundering and pillaging, then I miss Trinidad and Tobago! Congratulations, you passed the test! No, thank you. Presto! Now I've passed all three tests required to become a pirate of low moral standing. And by me faith, ye passed with flying colors. As soon as you bring me the certificate, we'll make this official. What if a true certificates of I? I'll take one of these. A certificate for pirates of low moral standing. Have it, Husky Hound. Let's see. You've passed all three challenges. The form looks official. Aye, aye. What's your real name? Russian Voskov, captain of the Inter. Ahem, <clears throat> just Russian Voskov, that's all. The last name starts with B H. Oh, man. This might take a while. How may I ask, have you been, Husky Hound? O U G H. <laughs> oh, God. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Where have I heard that little ditty? Well, here you go. <laughs> Your certificate properly filled in, spitted and sealed. Good day, sir. That's quite a work of art indeed. Oh, thank you. Now you'll fill it for me, right? Of course I remember spitting the certificate for you. <laughs> We're trying to get the, uh, the grog. But don't be asking for more till tomorrow. I'll get by with this. Thanks. Besides, me doctor's forbidden me from drinking alcohol. Shut your mouth! Or you'll make this pirate cry. Let's see. Aye, aye! Now that I possess me swashbuckler new certificate for pirates of low moral standing, I have the guts to do that and more. I put all this in my pocket. Let's see what to take. This thing here. Ooh, this too? Not that. Well, okay. Six hours this. later. That over there. Gonna take everything. Well. I would have felt just terrible if I'd left anything behind. Now you may inquire, how did I fit everything into me pocket? It's simple. The 3D object modeling department found it appropriate to issue me a voucher, so as to walk with less weight in me trousers. <laughs> right in my pocket. I can't figure out what it is. I guess I skipped over it when I took the rest of the treasure. 
by uh. Jove, it's a funnel, not very worthy as a piece of treasure. But I could use it as a megaphone for speaking to the crew of the Interfector. Ah, yes. Almost forgot the megaphone. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Chaos. Just now getting it. It's a great game. It's also terrifying. <laughs> Highly recommend. Also just realized we have not saved this entire day. <laughs> the, na the last hour and a half. Good old lapdog thinks it's magic and that it'll end up filling with grog on its own. I wouldn't do for the seeds in Reaching your it will be an impossible feat. What I wouldn't do for the seeds in your codpiece. <laughs> what I wouldn't do for the seeds. Wait, hold on. Okay. Be soul for the sip of the grog. Oh, the thirst. I oh, hope it holds. throat. Just one seed, I don't want to give me grog one. to a foe, but it may get me a couple of sunflower seeds. Yes, I'll scamper up the windowsill, place the funnel into the bottle, and fill it with grog in a snap. By the king of clubs, no! Listen, mangy pooch, ye be right. That magic bottle was a hoax. Only now ye be realizing it? Oh, I know where I know this VA from. It's Jack from Radiana. <laughs> By Jove, I have to do something or they'll never pull that bottle up. You'll learn someday, lapdog. Hey! Abracadabra! By the ace of clubs! That sounded like magic! You'll never learn. Look! By the deuce of spades! What did I say? Start serving the sunflower seeds. That's absolutely Jack from Radia. <laughs> Live and learn, Mangy Pooch. I believe you, lapdog. I believe you. No, nothing but moist seed husks left. Let's see if there's any luck this time. Good fishing. Five sunflower seeds. Nice. Let's hope he loosens his tongue as required. Here, parrot, a sunflower seed. Now, reveal to me where your master Malantunias is hiding the beacon. Give me seeds! Left from Spain to the east set sail. Give me seeds! Come on, you ratty mutts. Or I'll make you the fire of the rising sun. <laughs> Give me seeds. <laughs> then travel west to Newfoundland. Give me seeds. Then veer east to entry of hell and we go. Awkward, he's given us the code for the safe. Hidden beacon of Abernos emerged in hindquarters of the world. The end. Give me seeds. The end. Done. Well, there's no more seeds.
I don't know what I mean, I didn't have to do anything. Mind, it was all an auto. But I'd wager it's a riddle or some sort of cipher. Aaron, I don't know what you're expecting. <laughs> all right. Holy hemp and halter! The orbs are spinning. The interfector is attacking. Man your post, Tom. At last. We're under fire. Everyone in position. I, the great Freshian Barskov, captain of the interfector, have achieved. Holy Toledo! It's a blaze. Give me your sword, you filthy dog. Uh oh. Ah! What in the world? Stop, you traitor! What are you done with the beacon, you English cur? Tossed it into the tempestuous waters I have. Tossed into the sea. You'll pay for this. And you can consider yourself dead, because I, the great Russian Barskov, captain of the Interfector, have managed to put a stop to your unstoppable. <laughs> and she didn't see that coming. Satan's horns get away from me. Was it me you wanted? Uh, are you okay, Monsieur? Milady, never in my life have I felt so pleasantly unburdened, as though a huge weight were taken off my shoulders. Oh, mon Dieu, Russian, Russian, Prions. Prions. Wake up, Brian. Good day, Milady. You're alive. Is that not normal? Considering you fainted inside the galleon and Camille had to pull you up to the surface, it's almost a miracle. Camille? Aha! When you went into the stateroom, some furniture fell on you and blocked the entrance. Luckily, I made it in through a side window and got you out. Gee, thanks a lot, Camille. I owe you one. W what about the train tonight? I couldn't look for it while you were drowning. I hardly had enough time to push a huge vase off you and rush out. A vase? A yes. vase. It looked Chinese or something. Wait a minute. The tram tonight. Sushi, I'm going down to the galleon. But... Attention, everyone. What is that? <laughs> I said shut up. Adventure gamer. Thanks to my four-digit IQ and this amazing contraption which I myself have invented, I can accurately pinpoint the Trantonite's coordinates out of everywhere in the whole universe! You never guess in a trillion years what it's... Right underneath us? Ah! No fair mind reading! Anyway, it's hidden in an unimaginable spot that only a genius like myself could... In a Ming spittoon? Boy, has this kid learned some major telepathy, thanks to me. Boggles the mind, huh? Boggles the mind.
Nice. Got it. So now what, Brian? Hey, we can finish up this business in two seconds. We hand the Trentonite over to Alpha, the Trentorians vaporize the bad guys, and we're out of here. Uh, I don't know if I have time to prepare the materials. What materials? The party materials, because we have to celebrate, no? Of course. I'll build a self-slicing seven and a half story cake so we can try out the watch fork. Hey, <laughs> the watch fork. The Trentorians have some finger licking good crackers. You see, crackers. I love dunking those in orange juice. Brian. Are you okay? No. Well, cheer up for the party, cuz... There isn't gonna be any party. Yet. This is just the beginning. Everything we've been through on Mala Island, in the Tiki Temple, and Alaska. It's all just a tiny appetizer compared to the main dish we have coming. To begin with, does anyone know how to get to the lake? Those soldiers are guarding it on every front, and they've even installed security cameras inside and out. We can't get near the Trentorian ship without being caught. And if they see us, a whole regiment armed to the teeth will be there for the welcoming ceremony. If Kordsmar wants to finish us all off, he'll do so without flinching. <laughs> He'll stop at nothing until he can get Pinyon to open the amoeba, and then nothing will get between him and the NG Zero. And Kordsmeyer's not our only problem. No, that colonel may be psycho, but at least he has his ideals. The one I'm really afraid of is Tarantula. She doesn't believe in anything, which makes her totally unpredictable. Coming face to face with her is like a death sentence. Plus, she hangs out with a gang of mercenary thugs who will have no qualms about slicing and dicing us to make spider food. You have an ace up your sleeve, though. Your friends on the island. Maybe they can help us. Maybe, but we don't even know if they're still on Mala Island or if they've escaped. We have, we have friends. Well, I'd rather not think about the other possibilities. And speaking of aces up sleeves, what about Kordsmeyer's? He has a Trantorian, a fifth columnist he calls John Doe, who we know <laughs> nothing about. But because of his position and technological knowledge, he may be the most dangerous person on the face of the earth. What? <laughs> it's too much. I can't take it all, but I can't ask you guys to help me either. You can count on me, Brian. You can count on me, Brian. All for one and one for all, BB. Yeah! We'll smash those villains and rescue the girl! Oh, Gina. Why in the world did we get into that plane? We w didn't show up to stop. Impossible. Look at me. Look at all of you. Not you, Joshua. Do we have any <laughs> chance at all of defeating a whole army? None. You're wrong, my dear friend. There is one. Professor Simon? <laughs> when did you get here? You have a new ally on your team now. <laughs> oh my god, it's the dream of the turtle. Ryan takes off into the sunset with just the turtle. To be continued. <laughs> Runaway three. Look, everyone, that sounds like an old new story. A great one indeed. We have to tell it someday. But for now, let the party begin, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they did tell you this at the end of yesterday, 
And I even mentioned it at the end of yesterday. That this game ends abruptly. is jamming though can't wait for it to get muted on youtube shout out to youtube <laughs> what are we waiting for chaos <laughs> he said wait three times I'm still waiting. So, um, I wasn't sure how long this was going to take in comparison to how long trivia was going to take. I did skip a few things we could have done. None of which were really anything important. But they, um, I got nothing planned at this point. <laughs> we did enough. We did what we could. I forgot about the uh, the adventure guy. Dean. Oh, I forgot his last name. <laughs> Dean. Dean. I don't remember. Uh, so next week. All right, I'll let I'll let you guys. I'll I'll give you guys the option. All right, I'll give you guys three options. I had planned... I like maze and or puzzle solving. I gotta be in the right mood. Classic, that's his name. Dean Glassic. Glassic? No, I think it was Glassic. No, yeah, actually, I think you're right. It might be Glassic. Either way, <laughs> it's pretty close. It's close enough. Uh, anyway, so choice number one. We start Fox Hunt for the PlayStation. Uh, Fox Hunt is a FMV game <laughs> starring the uh, voice actor for Johnny Cage in the Mortal Kombat games. Uh, Andrew Bowen. Andrew Bowen has actually been in quite a number of other things, but... The only thing I can think of you guys would know of is uh, Johnny Cage. It's an FMV game uh, for the PlayStation 1. It's also a PC, but I don't have the PC version. Uh, second option, we play a point-and-click adventure game called Beyond the Steel Sky, or wait, Be Beneath the Steel Sky? I think it's Beneath the Steel Sky. It's a, like, cyberpunk-ish, um, futuristic-ish... Uh, 1990s point and click adventure game. Ew, hold on, I'm looking up Jonathan Allen. I'm pretty sure that's the VA for, uh, what was his name?
Those credits. I don't remember this guy. Who's this guy? I remember this guy though. My last test to make it into intelligence. Getting the cigar box back from Colonel Cordsmire. Ah yes. It's an unusual mission that only a soldier with my valor and loyalty could accomplish. No oh, wait! What dastardly dangers I might come up against, or how I'll escape. This was from the pilot from the beginning of the game. With honor and courage. Or maybe it wasn't. That's the guy, the pilot from the beginning. We have a visitor. This is starting to get fun. <laughs> What? <laughs> Claude. Um. All right. Anyways, that's Runaway: The Dream of the Turtle.